everyone and welcome to The Crow Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Alana Smith and this time last year the Crows were sitting in eighth position so a much better start in 2017. Now coming up in today's show why this injured Crow has his eyes firmly set on one game later this year and getting up close and personal with your youngest fans. But first, statistics and more statistics. You could argue that football is drowning in them. Every second of the game, every element of a player's performance is measured by statistics. Their value to coaches is obvious, but fantasy leagues have surged in popularity on the back of statistics. Champion data supplies all of the AFL stats and game day is a high pressure experience. Along inside, give it spoil. Stats are obviously an integral part of the game. It gives you a good indication on your key areas you want to work on, and uh, I guess it's a good form of feedback for yourself to see, you know, I guess where you're at. We get a live feed from Champion Data during the game, um, and that'll come into the coach's box, and we can review the statistics basically live. So as the kicks happen out on the field, we get the feed through to the box. So we're going to have 10 people working on the one game. We've got a game caller who basically does a statistical commentary of the game over the phone to Melbourne. Um, in our bunker there, we've then got a bat caller who's watching footage live from the TV to make sure we don't miss anything if our vision's obscured or something like that and a keyboarder who's putting all the stats in on the computer which then gets a live feedback here to us and the clubs and the clients. Shark, give it hard, handle. Tom McDonald receives smothered by Hampton and Hampton tackle. We've got four analysts in the coach's box whose main role is to sift through the vision and also the data so they're not really watching the game as such they're actually just reviewing what's happened so you know quite often you've got your head down for long periods going going through the vision, going through the data and then feeding that information back to the coaches. The information's all there, it's obviously different people have different levels of access to it but um, particularly for the clubs, if a coach wants to know something we can give it to them. So we try to focus on the things that are relevant to our game plan, so we're trying to assess whether we're playing the way that we want to play, um, so there's certain KPIs that we look at as a, as a club um, to make sure we're playing footy the way that the Crows want to play footy. Jake gets it out. Douglas Hard, keep ineffective We obviously get a lot of data that comes through. Um, at quarter time or half time, we obviously just sift that down to the real basics for the players. So there'll only be a couple of indicators that we'll pass on to them. Um, and that'll just be the key things that we want to get out of that game. Um, they, they make it pretty clear though, they, they, they show us our key areas, our key indicators of, of what we um, you know, want to do and what we feel helps us win the game. As part of the leadership group, Tom Lynch has to occasionally confront sensitive issues and difficult problems. So dealing with a few questions from children should be a walk in the park. After all, as one of the few players with children of his own, he's better prepared than most. Or is he? Let's find out. Hi Tom, my name's Reuben. I've got a question for you. What's, the fa what's your favourite goal that you've ever kicked? Hey Reuben, how are you buddy? Yeah, my favourite goal that I've ever kicked um, was probably against Sydney at a home game in 2016. It was uh, late in the game and uh, it was in Eddie's pocket, so I, uh, I've certainly let him know about that. Hi Tom, I'm Lockie. And do you love being as red as much as I do? Hey Lockie, I actually dye my hair red, mate. It's uh, a bit like Rory Atkins dyes his blonde, so I've actually got natural brown hair, but I choose to be a redhead. Hi Tom, I'm Henry, and what advice would you give a new footballer? Hey Henry, great question. Um, what advice I'd give a, a new footballer is to just enjoy himself and, uh, and to work really hard and, uh, and to make sure you listen as much as possible. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun when, when you're uh, putting in the hard work and uh, you get the rewards from it. Hi Tom, my name's Ariel. Did you play any other sport growing up, just not footy? Hey Ariel, yes, I played uh, a number of sports growing up. Um, I was always encouraged to play as many sports as I could and uh, it probably took away a little bit of my homework, but um, I played cricket, I played basketball and soccer. None I was very good at, but um, yeah, really enjoyed playing. My name's Jackson Taylor, that's my question to you. What was it like when you first got picked as an AFL player? Hey Jackson, um, yeah, obviously, Great thrill when I was able to get drafted and, and, uh, and uh, basically live out my dream of playing AFL football. Hi Tom, my name is Vince. What's your favourite part of footy? Hey Vince, how are you mate? Uh, my favourite part of footy is definitely winning. Um, 
it's really enjoyable when you have a win on a, on a weekend with 50,000 fans cheering on and, and then once you get into the rooms with the players it's, um, it's really special in there so um, you know the, the joy on the players faces and, and the supporters faces after a, after a win there's nothing, no better feeling. Yes, Tom has two children of his own, a little boy, Kobe, and a one-year-old daughter, Taylor. Now, after the break, is this one way to extend your playing career? And the race is on to catch Dougie and Sauce. Welcome back. Well, it doesn't take much to stir the competitive juices in the Crows boys. So finding out who's the best off-road driver is a challenge they can't resist. This week, it's Josh Jenkins' turn behind the wheel of the Toyota Hilux over a special course at Saunders Gorge outside Adelaide. And Paul Seedsman went along for the ride. It was a bit of fun, something different. I haven't done any four wheel driving before, so um, certainly different. <laughs> he reckons this wasn't the rough track either. No, this is a smooth one. Is it a rift? Surprising how easy it is to do it, but you, you, know, you get a bit tense and a bit anxious, particularly when you haven't done it before, so uh, certainly fun. It's all right, we'll pick that bit up later. <laughs> <laughs> Not my car, Paul. <laughs> I'm from the country, so it's good to get in a ute and feel like you're uh, back on the farm. You heard of it? Oh, <laughs> you heard it nothing. I'm glad you're finding this funny, Paul. You haven't driven yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, he knocked over a few of the sandwiches uh, in the waiting room before, so he nearly lost them on the uh, on a few of the bumps. So how's your lunch feeling back there, right? Yeah, <laughs> I actually shouldn't eat that many sandwiches. <laughs> what are you talking about, Paul? It's given a fair bit of lip in the back, and now he's in the, behind the steering wheel, so I'm looking forward to his time. The new day's done. Josh isn't exactly a lead foot alongside some of the other past and present players. He's sitting seventh and Seeds obviously thinks he can do better next week. Now, players and coaches always talk about the elusive 1%, that little edge, whatever it might be, that brings an advantage. Well, Richard Douglas and a few others believe yoga is the answer. Notice the sensation, perhaps the burning in the soles of the feet. Breathe deep into that. I do yoga just because as you get older I think you, you get more sore and it's just another tool that helps me recover better um, physically and mentally. Yoga is not for every player. The handful that do adhere to the ancient Indian practices gather twice a week. So we start off with a bit of stretching. Um, obviously you know we do a lot of physical activity so the muscles get really tight from time to time so it's nice to have a good stretch and loosen up uh, and then we'll, we'll go into a bit of um, relaxation and, and meditation at the end for about 20 minutes so all in all the session goes for probably 45 minutes. Okay when you're ready take your time slowly transition come back to centre and releasing all the way down. Yoga is much more than physical exercise it has a meditative and spiritual core but can it benefit a player's performance? We probably can't train any harder physically out on the track you know every club I would say it does a pretty similar amount but it's, we're trying to find that little 1% um, whether it be through diet um, in the gym um, or you know as we mentioned the yoga. Drop left ear towards the left shoulder. Ultimately Richard Douglas hopes yoga can help extend his playing career. I think the mental fatigue side of things in football is huge these days you've got a lot of pressures and expectations and it's a long season so I think um, you know, yoga really helps me to relax and you know when I walk away from the session I just feel a lot clearer and, and happier. While some swear by yoga, others say a strict diet makes a difference. Daniel Talia and Brad Crouch might watch what they eat, but do they know what they eat? This week, thanks to Thomas Farms, Crouchy cooks a meal for his blindfolded mate and we'll see if he can taste the ingredients. We're here thanks to Thomas Farms Kitchen. 
I'm going to lay down a challenge from my good mate Dan Talia. I'm going to cook up a tomato pesto gnocchi, blindfold him, and see if he can come in and guess what it is. I'm pretty happy with what I produced here. Let's get Tails in now. He's blindfolded and see what he does. Come on, mate. Knife for four. Wait a minute, no, just a four. It's on in there, be careful. <laughs> Tell me what you reckon. Are you sure you cook this? Yes, it is. It's very well cooked. This is a gnocchi for sure. Yep, beautiful. I can taste it. Eaten it a thousand times. Taste a bit of tomato in there. Yeah. I reckon there's some sun dried tomatoes. Is it pesto? Huh. Yeah, it pesto is. In yeah. There's a bit of, I don't know what the cheese is. There, there's cheese on there as well. <laughs> I reckon you've done pretty well there, mate, to be honest. Take the blindfold off. It's a rich tom tomato pesto gnocchi with courgette and feta. You sure you cooked this? <laughs> mate, look at how good it, it is. Was, I know, it's beautiful. <laughs> Still no wiser as to who rules in the Crows' kitchen. Stay with us after the break. The missing forward who can't wait to bounce back. And the former Crow with a sympathetic ear. When players need a good laugh, they often look no further than Brody Smith. In return, he likes nothing more than putting them in the hot seat and grilling them for 60 seconds, thanks to Revolution Roofing. This week, it's the turn of fellow defender, Jake Lever. Welcome to the Victory Verandas hot seat. This week, we've got Jake Lever. All right, Jake, nice and easy. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Melbourne. Uh, AFL club you supported growing up? I supported the Sydney Swans. Which player at the club thinks they're the funniest? Probably the bloke sitting next to me. Standard answer. And besides yourself, who rates himself in the media? Uh, Tom Lynch does. Best city you've travelled to? London. The best and worst part of being an AFL footballer? Uh, the best is probably playing in front of big crowds at Adelaide Oval. Um, and the worst, going down to the beach when it's about 11 degrees after every game. Firstly, your nickname and the best nickname at the club? Uh, my nickname is Snake, and the best nickname at the club would have to be for Signorello, which would be Prince. And why is your nickname Snake? I was Jake the Snake. Uh, I know the answer to this, but do check your own stats after the game. Yes. <laughs> and if you could be anyone else in the world, who would it be? LeBron James. Why? Because he's a king. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks for joining us, Snake. Thank you. Well, Jake is undoubtedly one of the Crows' recent recruiting successes. So too, Mitch McGovern. He proved to be the X Factor in attack last year, but his goals for this season have been put on hold while he recovers from injury. Mitch is not used to such setbacks and he promises to make an impact when he returns. Driving it wide for McGovern. Got there. After an outstanding debut season last year, Mitch McGovern had become a vital cog in attack. That was until the round three showdown. McGovern's done a hammy, I think. I've never done a soft tissue injury and to feel something like that go, it's definitely a red flag straight away. Obviously all your hard work from pre-season goes down the drain. Um, but obviously the severity of the hamstring obviously makes it a bit worse. The severity of the torn hamstring meant a prolonged recovery. So how has he coped? Do I have footy now? Um, I used to play a lot of golf. Obviously with the hamstring you can't really do too much activity. So um, at the moment I'm just trying to uh, find my feet outside of footy, doing a bit of volunteer work um, and pretty much wherever I can just find myself doing something because when you're sitting around doing nothing it's when you sort of dwell on things. Mitch has resumed running and kicking, but drills and contact sessions are still two or three weeks away. This is really my goal, just to smash the second half of the year. Obviously put my best foot forward when I come back in the SINFL, and then fingers crossed get another opportunity and hopefully play my role for the team. Fortunately, Mitch shares a house with three teammates, so he's had plenty of emotional support. Yeah, so I've got a full house. Um, I live with Riley O'Brien, Harry Deer and Dean Gore. Uh, the boys are pretty good company around the house, which is nice. 
Mitch already has his eyes set on an end-of-year rematch with his older brother Jeremy in the Eagles' colours and says he'll never forget their first encounter. Two McGovern's go. I never get nervous for games and first thing Jeremy, it's the only game I've ever been nervous for, so uh, I was quite <laughs> rattled by it, you could say. Piping McGovern. Oh. Good call, Dana. A little slide in. When he makes this, it's hard to stop him. Realistically, Mitch's return to the senior side is probably still four to five weeks away. Now, much attention has been given recently to the mental health of sportsmen and women, particularly after retirement. It's an issue close to the heart of former Crow, Andrew Crowell, who suffered mental illness during his 44-game AFL career. He's now the player welfare manager with the Brisbane Lions, and we caught up with him in this segment, Flying the Nest, brought to you by Flight Centre. by Jarman, the hand pass in, and Crowell for goal, kicks it. Pretty much halfway through this 2002 season, uh, everything had built up, and I was—I remember standing in a in a session called injury prevention, and um, the physio was walking up and down, and, and I just felt like I couldn't be in the room anymore. I just had to get out of there. I felt quite claustrophobic, and one of my teammates um, grabbed me and said, you, "You okay?" And I said, "Clearly, I'm not." Um, he dragged me into the into the doctor's room, and and then uh, I, was, I was pretty much diagnosed with depression there, and a, a bit of fresh air back at a little town called Price, the hometown on the farm was, was uh, about enough um, sort of medication I needed to, to help me get, to get through it. So I came back and, and started playing good footy after that. Crowell in just his sixth game. He's kicked his third goal. And well spotted up and a good mark. And there's Crowell on that lead. To be part of that side and to get to a prelim. Unfortunately, we couldn't get through to play the, the mighty Brisbane Lions in the grand final that year. But we, uh, we took on uh, Collingwood in, in front of about 93,000 people at the MCG. And yeah, it was a big highlight to, to get that far. Would have been nice to, to get through to the next week. But um, as I said, it was just a great experience. So I'm the head of personal excellence and wellbeing at the Brisbane Lions Footy Club. Been up here since January. My job is to make sure that we're looking after the person, not just the player. Um, so I do a lot of work with players making sure that they're engaging in um, education, training, employment, community type work outside of football. It was a dislocated knee that ended Andrew's AFL career back in 2003. Still to come, an awkward question about golf. And there's no guessing what might end up on social media. reminded every day how social media is becoming an increasing part of our lives and joining the crows on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram will ensure you get exclusive insights and breaking news. Now here's Crows AFLW co-captain Chelsea Randall sharing some fan mail on Instagram from a young six-year-old. And how good were some of our photos of players with their mums to help celebrate Mother's Day last week. Good stuff. Well, many players choose golf to help them unwind and relax. Occasionally, they might be tempted to take some liberties. So we thought we'd find out who's most likely to cheat on the golf course. And one name in particular kept cropping up. Andy Otten. <laughs> you won't get another answer for that. Um, you can probably hear this a lot of Andy Otten. Yeah, he's renowned for it. <laughs> um, Andy Otten. <laughs> Is there a few audits coming up for Andy Otten's golfing Captain Taylor Walker? Or uh, Andy Otten as well? Uh, Andy Otten. Um, you've probably heard it before, but he's got the foot wedge and you get to the green and ask him what he got and he does the old uh, three. Not very kind about Andy, were they? All right, let's find our crow's face in the crowd. What about we settle on you? If you recognise yourself, contact the club before 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and a merchandise pack will be yours. Now, looking ahead to next week, we'll celebrate Indigenous Round. It's a highlight of the AFL season and players will share their thoughts about what it means to them. If you want to 
play AFL at the top level, you've got to step out of your comfort zone, you've got to take that next step and um, your family's always going to be there for you. A feature not to be missed. That's about all we have time for today on The Crow Show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Don't forget to go to the club website, afc.com.au, for all the latest news and player profiles. Thanks for watching and I look forward to your company again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Catch you then.